Well, welcome back yet again and a little bit of a change of locale. This is uh, my garage, but on my trailer here, one thing's way more interesting than the others. So I bet you can guess which one it is, but I'm going to unload it and do a time lapse and reveal the new project. And so here we have item one, a two-wheel dolly. Not so interesting. And here we go, item number two and number three. Frames to a patio door. Again, not so interesting. And here's items four and five. The doors for the sliding door. How many of you guessed that ahead of time? Again, not so interesting. But that leaves us with one big box left. Aha, oh, and number one was a success. Did not break it. So I successfully managed not to break one of these on the way back. And now it's time for the ta-da. Did 
Ta da! This is a universal laser system 25 PS laser cutter slash engraver. Now, as the internets can see, this thing's pretty well ravaged. Um, the story that I got was the person I bought it from bought it from a school shop. Needless to say, it's seen all sorts of abuse uh, for parts for his machine. And then I bought it because I wanted the axes and basically the frame. So I got a, what I think is a pretty decent deal on it. And I do have some of the electronics uh, inside the house. They were already dismantled, so I didn't want them bouncing around in the trailer. And right over there by that tire is the stand for it. Uh, the one major thing that's missing, and it's pretty major, is the laser tube. So uh, he kept that as a spare for his machine. Um, this used a RF tube, a metal tube, 25 watt. Uh, originally it was a Sinrad tube. Just to get one of those rebuilt today, I did some checking on it. It was like 1,200 to two grand. And I can get a 50 watt uh, high voltage DC tube and power supply for like 600 bucks. Um, the RF tubes are much, much nicer for engravers because you can turn them on and off real fast. And also it doesn't, it doesn't cause the tube to degrade as fast when you do that. Um, I'm only using this for my, my own personal hobbyist use, so I'll, I'll live with the degraded tube and you know, I might have to replace it once every 10 years versus once every 20 years at the rate I'll use it at. But I may come to regret this decision, I can always switch back later. So the tube box would, would have mounted right here, and there would been a mirror to shoot the laser in, hit that mirror block right there, which would bounce over to the laser head. Only other, you know, the lenses are shot, the mirrors are shot. Well, they're not shot, they're, they're in bad shape. Um, I do have a little midget servo for this axis here. All the belts and pulleys are here. The one thing that seems really odd, you know, you look at this servo motor, it's like what? You know, that's a decent sized NEMA stepper. Somewhere down here, it must be underneath the plate is the drive for the table up and down. I'm missing the table. I'll have to make something up there, but that's pretty straightforward. It's a big sheet of aluminum, I think, in the original machine. Um, this does have a place to plug in a rotary table, and it has a four-axis control box in it. I don't know what the fourth axis motor looks like, but this is the motor I was given for the one that was missing. Um, the connectors do mount match up, but man, look how tiny this thing is. Two point four volts, point six amps. I'm I'm just surprised they can scan the head back and forth. I mean there's no mass to the head, so maybe, but I'm kind of sort of fearing is they may have stolen the y-axis motor or x-axis motor off of this and swapped it with the Z. Um, I've read some posts online that the Z had a sm one of the, the z-axis had a smaller motor, but when I take this apart, I'll find out for sure. Um, also, I get these nice little stickers that weren't on the original machines that you know are, are shop tastical. Um, this is the air inlet filter there in the door and it shoot the air up and then it suck it down the back. But the nice thing about this one is with these big access doors and a little uh, creative switch overriding, I should be able to stick a larger piece of stock in the front and engrave it if I need to. Uh, this has a 24 by 18 bed on it or engraving area on it. So I don't think I'll ever need to do that. That's going to be bigger than just about anything I ever want to do. So, what's next? Next, take it apart. So, again, I don't think I'm gonna sit here and make you watch every single screw, nut, and bolt I take out of this thing. So I'll do a time lapse, but I basically want to strip this thing down 
and wash the insides. I'm going to take all the electronics off, all the mechanicals off, anything that would get hurt by getting wet. And then me and a bottle of Simple Green are going to go medieval on its ass.